Here's an update on the Software Defined Radio. It's been a little while since I did an update, a couple days. I spent most of my time working on FPGA code and fighting some issues with doing fixed point arithmetic and, and overflow problems. The hardware has been stable. It's the same hardware as a couple days ago. No changes to that. What happened is with the fixed point arithmetic I was having some overflow issues and some wrapping in the data and since I didn't have a good test bench to simulate this on the computer I was doing synthesis um, iteratively and trying to interpret the data that I was putting up on the VGA monitor which was very time consuming so I gave up on doing fixed point arithmetic for now and went to to floating point and converted everything to floating point and voila here we have modulation so instead of being in the frequency domain this is showing modulation in respect to frequency so if we look at WinRAD right, this is getting the same baseband uh, as my FPGA you can see there's the two strong stations I've been listening to over the last couple days Sorry, it's talk radio, but uh, it's very convenient because there's two stable stations right next to each other. You can see it here. So this is the modulation, amplitude modulation. It's upside down, just the way the counters work in my FPGA code. And over here is some weaker modulation from the station that's hanging off of the frequ frequency spectrum. And here in the middle is all the noise from... AC line hum, the carrier, um, and I'll go into that a little bit later. So, let's listen to it. Alright, if I turn the speakers on. Action that will harm their ideology. They're not going to shoot them. Now there's our buddy Rush Limbaugh talking about harming people. So, it's the same, approximately the same noise as on WinRAD. So if I turn this on, we'll hear that Although this has automatic gain control, that it's got about the same noise and the same uh, same uh, response, which is cool. I serves uh, independently. Uh, for all. Now here's something interesting about this. So since the PC has all kinds of buffers and it's having to do everything uh, serially, the delay between the processing on the PC versus my hardware, which is about 50 clock cycles from the point that it reaches the analog to digital converter and then gets fed back out, is is huge. So I'm going to turn this back on. This is the PC. And I'm going to turn on the other, the FPGA, and you'll hear how quickly the FPGA is processing the, uh, processing the audio data. 401k to your kids' future. Your own future. Your jobs, your house, they know. They know how bad you are. They knew that was going to happen. They're not idiots. They know if they set out a... So, uh, quite a big, big difference in uh, delay there, which I think is kind of cool. All right, so I have to put a stake in the ground here and get this out. This is... I did this for myself and for Element 14. So, all the details will be in the Element 14 video that will be out in a few days. There will be, of course, the... The funny little intro to it that uh, I always do for them. Probably uh, wrangle Trish or someone to come over and uh, act in the skit. I'll document everything. We'll talk about quadrature data. We'll talk about the imagination uh, or imaginary and real uh, data, FFTs and quartic rotation, all that fun stuff. That'll all be in there, plus the circuit diagram. So keep your eye open. Uh, that'll be going up on Element 14. They get an exclusive on the, the video for a little over a week. And then um, from there I can distribute it other places. But um, yeah, that's about it. So I'll be going quiet on this project for a little while. After the Element 14 video, I'll probably play around with doing single sideband and some of the other... Uh, demodulation schemes. Now that I have stable data flowing through my pipeline, the, the difference between single sideband and amplitude modulation and frequency modulation is, is not a big deal. It's just um, pretty straightforward math. Alright, thanks for watching.